Okay, let's take a look at part two of how to evaluate a definite integral using a Riemann sum. And we're actually going to use exactly the same function that we used last time, f of x is equal to x squared. Now the only difference is last time we evaluated it on the interval from 0 to 2, this time we're going to do it on the interval from 1 to 5. So the process will be essentially the same, but you'll see this time there's a little bit more algebra involved in it. Now, if you have not done it yet, I will, I'd suggest that you watch part one of the Riemann sum series because it will explain uh, the process. And let's start, first of all, by looking at the formulas that we're going to use. Okay, first of all, all this, if you, again, if you watch part one, it will explain where all this came from. But we'll do the four steps, and the four steps involve, first of all, finding uh, delta x, the width of each rectangle, c sub i, which is the right edge of each rectangle, then we'll find the general solution and then finally find the exact solution by letting the limit, uh, finding the limit as n goes to infinity. So with that in mind, let's take a look at, <clears throat> at our process. Now the very first step or step number one, we need to find delta x, the width of each rectangle. So delta x, the formula would be delta x is equal to the width of the interval divided by the number of rectangles, which would be b minus a divided by n. So we'll take off on this thing, and step number one would be the following. So step one, uh, you want to find delta x. So delta x, the width of each rectangle, would be equal to b minus a divided by n. Now remember, a is the left edge of the interval, and b is the right edge of the interval. So in this problem, it would be 5 minus 1 divided by n, which would be 4 divided by n. <clears throat> and that's going to be delta x, which is the width of each rectangle. So we'll stick a little box around that thing. So there's our delta x. Okay, now let's take a look at step two. What step two says, you need to find the location of the right edge of each rectangle, and that's given by a plus delta x times i. So let's find c sub i. So we move on to step two. So what step two is, is find c sub i, and that would be equal to a plus delta x times i. <clears throat> now, in the last problem, if you're lucky, a will be equal to 0, and that simplifies things a lot. If you're not lucky, a is equal to 1 or some other number, and it just adds a little more to the algebra. So let's go ahead and try this. So starting at 1, then plus, now delta x is 4 over n times i. And what this will be, this will be equal to c sub i. So this is going to identify the right edge of each rectangle. So we'll stick a little box around this one. Okay, so you got the two things that you needed. You needed delta x and you need c sub i. So now we'll go on to step three. And what step three would be... <coughs> We'll put this right here. Now this is the one that takes all the work. So step three is the long step where you've got to do all the algebra. <clears throat> and let's go back and look at the rule. So what we need to find is the summation as i goes from 1 to n of f at c sub i times delta x. So the height of the rectangle times the width of the rectangle. Okay, so we want to find the summation as i goes from 1 to n of f at c sub i times the width of the rectangle delta x. Now let's plug in the things that we know. Uh, this will be the summation as i goes from 1 to n. And <clears throat> what you do is just evaluate x squared at c sub i, which is 1 plus 4 over n, or 4i over n. So basically, take the 1 plus 4i over n and plug it into x squared. So this will turn into 1 plus 4i over n squared.
squared. So all you did was plug c sub i into this function up here, x squared. Now you also have to multiply that times delta x, but delta x is 4 over n. So now you've got the specific numbers in for this problem. Okay, now the next step, just like we've done the previous problems, uh, the variable in this thing is going to be i, so you can treat anything with the n in it as a constant. So you can take the delta x and you can bring it to the outside of the summation sign. So that'll be our first step. So this will be equal to 4 over n times the summation from i equals 1 to n of this thing. Okay, now your next step is to go ahead and square this. So you want to square this thing right here. Now what this is like, you have to foil it. This is like having 1 plus 4i over n times 1 plus 4i over n. And to solve this thing, you'll have to use the foil technique. So you'll foil it when you square this out. So when you do that, you will have the following. This would be equal to the summation from i equals 1 to n. And when you FOIL this thing, first of all, 1 times 1 would give you a 1. And then plus, then you'll have twice 4i divided by n, which would be 8i divided by n. And then finally, you'd have plus. Now on this last one, you square, square the 4, square the i, and square the n which would give you 16i squared divided by n squared. So it's going to be the summation of all that. And again, it's just strictly algebra from here, so we just continue on. Now, just like we've done in other summation problems, and if you need to, you might want to back up and review your summation rules. If you have the summation of three terms together, you can split that up into each one of the terms separately, so that's what we'll do next. So I'll make this be the summation is i equals 1 to n of 1 plus the summation from i equals 1 to n of 8i over n plus the summation from i equals 1 to n of 16i squared over n squared. So all you did in that step is split it from a single summation into three separate summations. Now at this point, if you can, uh, bring the constants to the outside. So again, i is the variable here. So on each one of these, I'll try to bring the constants to the outside. So let's rewrite this as 4 over n uh, now, this one's set up, okay, we'll just leave it alone for a second. This would be the summation of 1 as i goes from 1 to n. Now, on this next one, though, what we'll do is this. We'll bring the 8 over n to the outside. And that will give you 8 over n times the summation of i as i goes from 1 to n. And then on this last one, bring the 16 over n squared to the outside. So that's going to give you 16 over n squared times the summation as i goes from 1 to n of i squared. So bring the constants out in front. Now I like to put them in parentheses just to remind me what I've got is this thing, the summation of i, and this one is the summation of i squared. So my next step will be to use the summation formulas to change those into their n formulas. Okay, so what that's going to give me is 4 over n, then, now remember the summation of a constant is just the constant times n, so this would be 1 times n, plus, then I've got 8 over n, and I'll change this one into its n formula. Now, just a reminder, the summation of i is equal to 
n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So change it into its n formula. Then you've got plus 16 over n squared. And also go ahead and turn this one into its n formula. So the formula the, for summation of i squared would be n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all divided by 6. So change them into their n formulas. And then the whole thing is in brackets. Also, just like we've done in previous problems, if you get a chance to cancel something out, go ahead and take advantage of that. So on this one, what I'll have is the 2 goes into the 8 and leaves me with a 4. These two ends will cancel out. Uh, I can divide both these by 2, so uh, this will give me a 3, and this will give me an 8. And then finally, I've got one end on top, n squared on the bottom, so this one will cancel out one, but not both of those. So now let's rewrite that in its more simplified form. So what this will be, will be 4 over n divided by, this one is just going to be n plus, now on this one, really what you've got is 4 times n plus 1, so uh, we'll go ahead and distribute that. You'll have 4 times this and 4 times this, which would turn into 4n plus 4. Then you've got plus, now you have 8 thirds over n, so this would be 8 over 3n times, and on this one, where you've got these two together, you'll have to FOIL that. So, first outer, inner, last. So when you do that, that's going to give you 2n squared plus, and then 2 and 1 would be 3n plus 1. So it turns into that. Now again, just be slow and steady as you go through these things, and eventually you'll come up with the right answer. Now a couple things you can put together, if you can get a chance to simplify or put them together. I've got 4 over n, and these two I can put together. I've got uh, 1n plus 4n would give me 5n, so this will turn into 5n, then plus I've got this 4, then plus, now at this point I'm going to have to distribute. So I've got to multiply this times this, times this, and times this. So you've got to distribute. And we'll cancel things out as we go. So on this one, um, I will have uh, <clears throat> 2 times 8 would be 16. Then it's over 3. But I've got n squared in the top and n in the bottom. That'll leave me with an n in the top. So 16n over 3. Now when I multiply 8, over 3n times 3n, the 3s will cancel out and the n's cancel out, and that just leaves me with an 8. And then finally multiply this thing times 1, and it's just it's self repeated. So that'll be 8 over 3n. Okay, the next thing to do now you've got to distribute this thing. So this thing times this times this times all the rest of them. So distribute this. And when you do that, you would get the following. Uh, 4 times 5 would be 20. The n's will cancel out, uh, which will get me to 20, and the n's cancel out. And then plus 4 over n times this would be 16 over n, then plus uh, 16 times 4 would be 64. The ends will cancel out. This will turn into 64 thirds. Then plus uh, 8 times 4 would be 32 over n. Then finally plus uh, this will be 
8 times 4 would be 32 over 3, n times n would be n squared. So this will turn into 32 over 3 n squared. And what this is, this actually is the general solution. So let's put a little box around this. So we'll go from here. So again, what this is, this is the general solution in terms of n. So the general solution in terms of n. Now with this solution, if you had a particular number of rectangles, suppose you had four rectangles, you could plug a 4 in for n and you would get the approximate solution uh, using four rectangles, or let n equal eight rectangles or 16 rectangles, however many you wanted. But we want the exact solution, so we're now ready to move on to step four. So what step four says is that if you take the limit of the general solution as the number of rectangles goes to infinity, you'll have the final answer. So what this is going to be, we will take the limit as the number of rectangles go to infinity of the general solution. So 20 plus 16 over n plus 64 thirds plus 32 over n plus 32 over 3 n squared. Now just like always, whenever you take the limit as the number of rectangles goes, that goes to infinity, any term that's got an n in the denominator will go to zero. So this term will go to zero, this term will go to zero, and this term will go to zero. And what's left over is just this added to this. So what that's going to give you is this will be equal to 20 plus 64 thirds. Well, since this is over 3, put this over 3, this would give you 60 thirds plus 64 thirds, which will give you 124 thirds for the final answer. And what this is, this will be the exact area under the curve between 1 and 5. So this is going to be the exact answer. So again, there's the whole process. Let's take a quick look from the top. Uh, again, first of all, find delta x, find c sub i. Then take uh, delta x and plug it in right here. Take c sub i and plug it in right here. And then from there on out, it's really just algebra. Uh, Move the constants out in front, uh, split it from a single summation into three separate summations, move the constants out in front. Um, right here, replace uh, the summation of i with their n formulas, and then it's just purely algebra from there on out. Spread it all out, simplify it, that will give you the general solution in terms of n. Uh, then to find the exact solution, take the limit of the general solution. Uh, any term has got an n, the denominator goes to zero, add the remaining part together, and you get the final answer. So that's a look at uh, how to use a Riemann sum to find a definite integral, the second part of it. And notice it took quite a bit more work when that first, when the a uh, edge of the interval was not equal to zero. If a is equal to zero, it saves you quite a bit of work. Uh, if A is not equal to zero, you wind up having to foil stuff, and generally it takes a little bit longer to solve them.